Now section three is going to introduce even more ideas about right triangle relationships. And a key mnemonic device you need to learn is SOHCAHTOA. And what this is telling you is that the sine of an angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine of an angle is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And the tangent of an angle is the opposite over adjacent. Now one of the things that's cool about triangles is that there is a special relationship between sides and their angles. They're interdependent. And so if you know the angle and one side, you know the other. If you know the sides, you know the angle. So there's a whole cool branch of mathematics called trigonometry that has to deal with this. And so we are getting into just the beginning parts. So this symbol, circle symbol I've made here, this is theta. That is a trig notion. It's like saying x for an angle. Sometimes we'll talk about alpha being an angle or beta being an angle. Those are all just trigonometry terms. It's ways to say a variable x, w, y. It's just the notation we do for angles. Now sine, cosine, and tangent all have to do with what angle you're starting with. So if I say this is theta, from theta this is my opposite side and this is my adjacent side and this is my hypotenuse. So it's all relative to where you are. If I jump over and I call A alpha or theta, then this becomes my opposite side relative to this blue theta and this becomes my adjacent side and my hypotenuse is still my hypotenuse. So you always want to know where you're starting from because your opposite and adjacent changes. So example one, it says find the sine, cosine, and tangent of x. When you see this, you want a ratio. You want a fraction. Okay? You want the relationship to the side. So I'm going to circle x because that's what we're talking about. So the sine of x is opposite hypotenuse. So from x, my opposite is 5, my hypotenuse is 13. So I write the sine of x is 5 over 13, and that's it. If I want the cosine of x, I need the adjacent and the hypotenuse. And so the cosine of x is 12 over 13. And if I want the tangent, it's the opposite over the adjacent. The opposite over the adjacent. So the tangent of x is 5 over 12. And that's all there is to finding the trig ratios. Now if I get down here to number two, and it says find the missing sides, and this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Here's my 45. So that makes this one of the legs, and it makes this one of the legs, and here's my hypotenuse. So I could say that I know I want one of these Here's my known, here's a known. So I could say in relationship, this is the opposite and the hypotenuse, so that's sine. The sine of 45 is equal to L over 2. In a minute, I'm going to show you a table. So I want you to trust me right now. I know one of the things you're going to have to memorize, the sine of 45 is the square root of 2 over 2. That's one of our accepted values from our special right triangles. When you get into Algebra 2 trig, you have to memorize this. So if the sine of 45 is equal to this, and this is the sine of 45, 
I can do a quick substitution and say, well, the square root of 2 over 2 is equal to L over 2. If I do a little cross multiplying, 2 square roots of 2 equals 2L, divide by 2, my side is the square root of 2. Now, you can use your calculator in degrees, and this is huge, you need to check your calculator, ask your teacher if you don't know if it's in degrees, calculator in degrees to find really any angle, but we're going to talk about our non 45, 45, 90, and 30, 60, 90 angles, because we're going to have a table for those. So let's jump ahead and look at that table. If you skip ahead to your notes, you see this table right here is what I'm talking about. So the sine of a 30 degree angle is 1 half. And that's a nice one you can use to check your calculator. Hit sine 30 and it better say 0.5 or you're not in degrees. The sine of 60 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2. The tangent of 60 degrees is the square root of 3. So this table is your special angles, 30, 45, and 60, and the exact trig values of your sine, cosine, and tangent. So it makes a great way to substitute and do some quick exact solutions. So let's go back to that example. This is a 30, 60, 90, and so if I set up to my 30 degree angle, I know this is the hypotenuse, this is the opposite side. This is the adjacent side. I would get the same values if I set up with 60. Same answers. So if I talk about the sine of 30 is the opposite over the hypotenuse is k over 12. The sine of 30, if you flip to that table, is 1 half k over 12, cross multiply, 12 equals 2k, k is 6. If I go back to 30 and I want to find the other side that's missing, little j, I'm talking about the cosine of 30 would be equal to j over 12. So the adjacent over that hypotenuse. The cosine of 30 from your table is the square root of 3 over 2. It's also on your reference sheet. Equals j over 12. Cross multiply. 12 square root of 3 equals 2j. Divide both sides by 2. And I have 6 square root of 3 equals j. And I've solved my triangle and I didn't have to touch a calculator. Now in this example, I only, I know this side, that makes this my 30, but for this, if I want to find little a, and this is little b, remember lowercase opposite the capital vertice, so let's find a first. What is a opposite? And I'm going to use the adjacent because that's what I know. An opposite and adjacent is the tangent of 60 is equal to a over 7. If I go to my table, the tangent of 60 is the square root of 3, a over 7. If you cross multiply, a is 7 square roots of 3. If I want to find b in relation to what I know and what I want, I'm talking about the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. So adjacent and hypotenuse is cosine of 60 is 7 over b. The cosine of 60 is 1 half. And if I cross multiply, I have b is 14. So try the next couple of problems and tune in for the next part.